Okay guys, from the backpack to the pocket, we're talking about the Benchmade 530, 535 Bug Out. Now this particular model is the 2002, or I should say the 535 BK 2002. So this is the black blade with the uh, 2002, which is kind of Blade HQ's exclusive, so that means it has 20 CV for the blade, and of course, gray G10 for the handles. But today we're going to actually be taking a look at the 535, and I'm talking about this 535 and this the ones that I've had in the past, because this is not my first bug out, and this will probably be my last bug out, but that's because it's a pretty solid bug out in 20 CV with pretty good handles. Might end up getting some custom handles, but overall, I like how this blade is configured pretty darn well so okay guys this is matt from the future just reminding you that if you want to see more alaskan gun edc survival and bushcraft content make sure that you hit that subscribe button ring the notification bell and of course leave a comment and a like while you're at it it helps with the bug out itself regardless to which version you get uh you know the bug out is i think a really solid option that manages with its size and its weight to bridge the gaps between having something that's useful in the outdoors and in and in everyday carry something that you can throw in your pocket forget about it you know pull it out when you need to open a letter or cut open a box but at the same time if you are definitely into like backpacking camping i'm not going to say that this would replace a solid or a stout camp knife per se you know i don't think that this is any uh, bat blind horse knives you know battle lore but i do think that this would do a pretty good job, especially if you're a ultralight backpacker and you just need something to, you know, cut open your mountain house meals, or you need something to strike a ferro rod to get your uh, isobutane stove going. So I think that this is a really good option for both of those kinds of spectrums, and it plays into both very well because of the size that it has, and it's actually a pretty good size. You know, you can get a comfortable four finger grip and as you can see you know there still is some handle hanging off and what that leads to is a longer blade that's about three and a quarter inches and uh, once again three and a quarter inches isn't huge and it's definitely not going to place or replace a main camp knife but that three and a quarter inch blade is definitely going to allow you to do things such as feather stick uh, you know, once again, open things and, you know, cut cordage, do whatever the general purposes you're going to need to do. In addition to that, it can also be pushed into roles such as field dressing or skinning animals very well, especially in something like S30V at stock steel or especially uh, CPM 20CV. You know, this is going to be a pretty darn good uh, steel going up against flesh, bone, skin, all of that type of stuff, it's going to hold an edge very well. Now granted, it might not be the easiest to field sharpen, but it kind of gets to that point where you don't really need to field sharpen the steel because it's not going to go dull unless you're processing like a whole moose. So that's what I have to say about that steel in particular, but overall, like I said, I think that the 535 is a really great knife for bridging the gap between an EDC and an outdoor knife. In addition, I think what makes the bug out really great for the outdoors especially is the axis lock. Now, the axis lock is a very tough lock, not the toughest out there. I think the triad still has it beat and you can find ways to, you know, make this lock fail, but this is no liner lock. This is no frame lock, you know. This is going to be very tough, very robust, and overall it can take a good beating if you have to baton this through a piece of wood to, you know, make a little campfire at night to keep you warm in an emergency or in a pinch, this blade will be able to do that for you. And that's what I like about it from a kind of survival standpoint is it's not the best survival blade out there, but in a pinch, it can certainly serve the role and actually do a pretty okay job at it. So that is uh, what I like about it from the outdoors side of things. Now I will say, you know, one of the biggest downsides from an EDC perspective uh, is the fact that it does feel very thin in the hand. Now, you know, you can't have your cake and eat it too. You can't have 
you know, a long blade that's lightweight and thin in the pocket, but also expect it to feel, you know, hand filling when you hold it. This knife definitely reminds me a lot of the SC3 and like the SC Azula, uh, where, you know, these blades are very thin as a fixed blade. You know, it's a very thin blade with very flat handles. Like you can see there's absolutely no contouring to these handles. And as a side effect of that, you know, it's a very compact package and this blade, you know, once again, it's very easy to carry, very compact and very thin, but when you go to handle it, you know, actually hold it, it's like, wow, okay, it's not very hand filling. And so I'm definitely reminded a lot uh, with the bug out, I'm reminded a lot of something like the SC Azula or SC3, where it has very flat handles and uh, it's not very hand filling. However, at the same time, there is, you know, quite a bit of space for the hand to spread out and it's not the worst after a while. You kind of have to get used to how the handle feels, but I feel once you do that, you know, it's not, it's not the worst. It's not the best, but it's definitely not the worst. And in a lot of EDC tasks, you're not gonna be sitting there and, you know, carving on something for five hours. You're going to be, you know, just popping open a quick box or, you know, doing something very fast. And so you usually are going to be holding the knife for too terribly long, but at the same time, for me, I definitely notice it and it's not as bad as I once thought, but it's definitely not the best. And I will say, originally, I definitely did not like the, I definitely didn't like the bug out as much, uh, my first bug out. And maybe that was due to the fact that those were the stock handles and, you know, the so with the original blue Grivery handles, the bug out leaves a lot to be desired. I think that those handles just feel very cheap and there's a good amount of flex to them, whereas the G10 certainly makes the uh, knife a little bit more quality because the handles have less flex. But either way, you know, they, they are solid. Um, and they're not going to, they may flex, but you know, they're not going to like snap or like bend completely out. So they, they are solid and, and the whole knife as a package uh, is just overall pretty, pretty well put together. No real complaints. Of course it does run on phosphorus bronze washers. So it is pretty darn smooth opening and closing. You guys can see it doesn't need much help or much assistance. Uh, this one is still pretty new. So it isn't the most drop shut, but at the same time, uh, it definitely doesn't take much. And so, anyways, that is what I think about this knife. I think that whether you're going to be using it outdoors or in an outdoors application, I think it's a really solid blade for that. I think it's a really solid blade to bounce between EDC and the wilderness. And that's kind of where I like this knife a lot. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say that this is my top choice if I was just going to be doing EDC alone. If I was going to be solely doing an urban kind of everyday carry, I would go, I would opt for something probably more like a Sabenza. Not to say that it's good because it's expensive, but the Sabenza just feels more hand filling and it feels a little bit more comfortable to use. Um, so I would probably go with a Sabenza over this for just everyday carry in an urban environment. But at the same time, the Sabenza is not as robust or as strong in a wilderness application. So, you know, if I was going between the two environments, I would be more likely to choose something like the Bug Out because it is better in a wilderness environment. In addition, though, uh, I think the Bug Out also fits in very well to any EDC or outdoor uh, application where you're looking for maximal uh, weight savings. If you're really looking to save ounces, not even just pounds, but ounces, I think that's where the bug out really shines because you're going to be able to save a lot of weight over other options, really just about any other option. I mean, even something like this SE3, or sorry, SE Azula 2, you know, is substantially heavier than this little bug out. Not to mention, if you go with something like this SE2, sorry, SE Azula 2, um, you're going to have to deal with a fixed blade. You can't necessarily just throw this in your pocket. I mean, you can, but you know, you're dealing with a knife that's this size. Whereas if you throw this in your pocket, you're dealing with a knife this size. And then when it's out of your pocket, you know, you have a decent blade that it's actually, I think about, yeah, it's actually larger than the Azula too. So yeah, 
Anyways, this is a really good knife for those types of applications. If you are looking for a blade that can go between those two types of uh, environments fairly well, and you're looking for something that's slim and lightweight that really disappears in your pocket, I think the Benchmade Bug Out 535, whether it's one of the custom iterations like the 2002, or if it's even just a stock option or stock iteration, um, it's definitely a solid option for sure. So anyways, guys, that's all for now. God bless, and I'm out.